Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 2,397. This week we've been celebrating the 4th Annual Chattanooga Motor Car Festival. It runs October 13th through the 15th. And this year's event includes all sorts of great fun, a Concours event, Brian Redmond's Targa 66, a Canosa Fall Rally, Meekum Auctions, the B-52s in concert, Luft Cold Pop-Up, and many others. Get your tickets now at ChattanoogaMotorCar.com. And be prepared to be inspired. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. Today I'm in uh, Minnesota. I, I've got to have a little accent when I think when I say that, with a very special guest by the name of, well, his name's Judson Dayton, but his friends call him Judd. Judd, welcome to Cars Yeah. Do you have any gear, and are you ready to release the clutch? I am ready to release the clutch. All right, we will have a little bit of fun today. Now, before I give you a proper introduction... I always ask my guests this. What's one little thing that most people don't know about you, Judd? Well, uh, it, it might be not everybody knows I'm a huge Ferrari enthusiast and uh, have been studying things Ferrari for a long, long time. So uh, I would have to say, uh, considering we're talking cars, uh, I, I'd have to say uh, I'm a major Ferrari enthusiast. Well, I would think so. And I'll tell listeners, that's what brought Judd and I together. When I moved up here to the Pacific Northwest some 30 years ago, I met a wonderful guy and his wife named Douglas and Jeannie Peterson. And we became good friends. He's a car guy. I'm a car guy. And we started talking about things. And he mentioned where he grew up. And he said, I have these next door neighbors, these two kids that, uh, you know, are kind of into cars. And uh, one of them uh, way back then was uh, racing vintage cars and ended up running a racing team. And he he had this brother that had a, uh, a kind of a funny nickname. It was Bino. And that was you, right? That was me. Yeah. And a lot of my buddies still still call me Bino. Well, I'll tell listeners. Actually, I'm going to wait to tell this story because I had a wonderful introduction to Judd uh, way back at the 2008 Cavalino event uh, in Florida. But I'm going to wait to tell that story because it's kind of a fun one. And I've shared it with many people, Judd. Uh, it's kind of endearing <laughs> to me. Let me give you an introduction here. Judson Dayton is one of this year's Willard J. Marriott Ferrari Club organizers at the 4th Annual Chattanooga Motor Car Festival. Judd's been an automotive enthusiast his entire life and, as he said, a Ferrari fan. And he's participated in many automotive events, including the Cavallino, a Ferrari Club of America events, Wheels of Italy in Minneapolis, and his Ferrari. He'll tell us about that in a little bit. Won Best of Show at the Amelia Island Concord Festival of speed. This year's Chattanooga Motor Car Festival is just that. It's a multi-day festival including a Concours event, a rally, Brian Redmond's Targa 66, car club gatherings, a huge Meekum auction, celebrity autograph sessions and discussions. Patrick Long, who was a guest last week, is doing a Lift Cult event there and a Ferrari gathering, which we're going to talk a little bit more about today. But first, a word from our sponsors, so give them a little love. We'll put our seatbelts on, sit tight, and we'll be right back. For several years now, you've heard me talk about Linkage Magazine. I've been a subscriber since the start. Their talented and creative team brings you a spectacular publication and website that shares the automotive passion from a worldwide perspective. Linkage is about driving, restoring, collecting, and firsthand experience at collector car auctions and more. They bring you real-world values plus rational, experienced opinions on the current markets. They cover the automotive world and the people who share our passions. And Linkage Magazine has grown, mailing you six issues annually. Join me on this journey with Linkage. They're geared for the automotive life. You can subscribe at LinkageMag.com. Years ago, when it was time to renew my collector car insurance policy, my carrier's rates went up way up, but my usage was the same and I never made a claim. I didn't even have a ticket. So what's with that? So I turned to American Collectors Insurance. Has your collector car insurance recently raised your rates for no good reason? Tired of paying an annual membership fee? Then it's time to look around and call American Collectors Insurance. I shopped around, I asked friends for recommendations and found a winner 
that I can trust. And boy, I'm glad I did. I saved hundreds of dollars every year and slept better at night knowing my baby was properly insured. American Collectors Insurance have been protecting vehicles since 1976. They provided me with an agreed value insurance policy backed by their history of taking great care of their clients. What could be better than that? So give them a call and ask for a quote today. 866-ACI-YEAH. That's 866-224-9324. And protect the ones you love like I did with American Collectors Insurance. Classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors. So, uh, Judd, we are back. Now, this event that you are involved in, and you're involved in a lot of automotive events, but the Chattanooga event is something quite unique and quite special. And the fact that you've been able to help set up part of this event, as I mentioned, the Wilder J. Marriott Ferrari Club uh, organization, they're going to have special Ferraris on display. I want you to talk a little bit about that first. We're going to talk about some of the other things you're doing because this is a huge three-day event, but getting together Ferraris to put together this show, what can we expect to see besides your car? And I promise you listeners, we're going to talk about Jed's car in a minute. Well, on the Ferrari end of things, uh, we have called this club the Willard J. Marriott Ferrari Club. And there are no dues and there's no responsibility other than if you bring a Ferrari uh, to the Chattanooga Motor Car Festival, which runs from October 13th to 15th this year, uh, you can be part of the Willard J. Marriott Ferrari Club. And uh, Mr. Marriott was was a... uh, sort of a mentor to Byron DeFore, who uh, uh, is really spearheaded the whole Chattanooga Motor Car Festival. And uh, Mr. Marriott was an early Ferrari enthusiast long ago, and uh, we thought it would be a nice tribute to him uh, to name this club after him. We're excited to bring uh, about 25 of the world's greatest Ferraris to Chattanooga in October. Now, are they going to be all older cars or will will it be a mix of older and newer Ferraris? It will be a a little bit of a mix. We're trying to get some really special cars and not that the newer ones aren't special, but uh, they don't have some of the history uh, uh, that some of the older cars do. So we've got competition cars. We've got, you know, race, uh, all kinds of race cars. We've got you know, one-off cars. We have some newer cars, uh, some just finished multi-year restorations, others that uh, are pretty original from day one. And we've got a very good mix of really special Ferraris that you just don't see every day. So uh, we're hoping a lot of people will come and take a look at these beautiful cars. This is a great little segue into a car that you're going to be bringing to the show. Uh, I'll tell you listeners in I've told a lot of friends this story, Bino, and I'm going to use Bino your nickname because this is how you and I were introduced. When I went to the Cavalino in 2008, uh, our mutual friend, Dougie, and we'll call him Dougie because he grew up next to you. And that was, I think, what a lot of you guys called each other when you were little. And he said, when you get there, you got to meet my good buddies, uh, Judd and Duncan your brother. And he said, I want you to do this. Go up since you've, I'd already met your brother a couple times and go up to Judd and say, pretend like you're an old childhood friend and call him Bino and see what happens. <laughs> and, and that's what I did. And I, I, I felt a little bad because you were sitting there being so polite and I'm sure in your mind was going, who the hell is this guy? I don't remember him from my childhood. And I'm talking about Dougie and Doodle, your brother, his nickname. And you're sitting there just like, who and I think you finally went. I I really apologize. I don't remember who you are, <laughs> and, <laughs> and I broke you know broke the code and said, "Oh, I'm a friend of Doug," and he had me do this, and we laughed. And we were standing by your car, which is a 250 short wheelbase, and I said, "You know, this is one of my favorite Ferraris. I would really love if you take me for a ride." And you said, "Nah, I don't take people for rides." And <laughs> part of me went. Well, gosh, the guy was being so nice, and now he's not, he's not so nice. And you you tossed me the keys, and you said, "Why don't you drive it yourself?" And <laughs> you, yeah, you made my day. And I've told this story since two thousand eight, dozens of times. I had so much fun. We went out for a ride. I remember you saying, "Oh, come on, stand on it, get the revs up. <laughs> this you can't hurt this thing." And it was just so delightful. And I, I to this day, I want to thank you for you know filling that that dream. But I want you to talk a little bit about this car because. You have had this thing for a long time, right? 
Yep, it's uh, about 38 years or thereabouts, and uh, drive it weekly all summer long in Minnesota, and uh, taking it to lots of places, as you mentioned earlier, especially the Cavalino. I think I've been at uh, all but two Cavalinos with that car, or maybe three, but over the years, and uh, have a lot of fun with it. And the absolute most fun thing to do is toss somebody the keys <laughs> and say, hey, give it, give it a whirl. And, uh, you know, it's a pretty significant race car, but it's possibly the easiest car on the planet to drive. And Sir Sterling Moss said it was the best car ever made because you could drive it to the racetrack, drive it for, you know, 24 hours, hardcore, and then hop back in it and drive home and stop at the grocery store on the way home. <laughs> and, uh, it, it's just an awesome, awesome car, and uh, I've had a lot of fun with it and, and let uh, an awful lot of people drive it, which uh, is fun to do. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I got to tell you, listeners, when you go to Chattanooga, uh, don't go up and ask Judd to drive his car, okay? Because we may be setting him up for a big challenge here. Uh, just go up and say, hey, I heard about the story. Nice to meet you. Tell me about your ride. Uh, I don't want to set you up for <laughs> thousands of people since i have so many followers nowadays uh to want to take your your car for a spin but it'll be parked there they'll be enjoying it and you know you got that car about a year well about the same year that i got married so yeah you have had that car for a long time i think that's really cool let's talk about some of the other things that are happening at this festival because it really is a festival i had louis luigi canetti on the show on monday he's the grand marshal and he talked about uh, all the different things that they're going to be doing, but having him there is pretty cool. Um, one of the things that's neat about car shows is people. And you are a people person, Judd. You love people. Um, I know that uh, our meeting was a good example of being so polite and kind to a guy who was pulling a little joke on you. I'm still going to blame Douglas for that because <laughs> he set me up for that deal. So Douglas, hey. Uh, but the people, now there's going to be some really cool people at this event, right? Oh, there's going to be some great people. And Luigi Canetti is really a wonderful guy. And no one knows the history of all this uh, better, having experienced so much uh, of what his dad was doing back in the day. And uh, he's a great grand marshal kind of guy and has still great passion and uh, uh, knows Ferraris uh, better than almost anybody. And so uh, he's going to be a lot of fun. And, you know, everyone from uh, uh, Patrick Long, who's going to be there with a whole bunch of cars and and, uh, you know, David Hobbs, and there's just a great group of people, uh, talking about, uh, Justin Bell, uh, great race car drivers and car enthusiasts and people who have written about automobiles. And, uh, we've got a really great group and Ken Gross, who wrote a book on 250 short wheelbases, uh, is a big part of organizing this event as well. So there's some really interesting people and, great uh, folks that will have little symposiums and and uh, Justin Bell will be doing his uh, podcast from out there and and uh, bring some other uh, folks to the microphone and uh, it's just a great way to hear wonderful stories about really cool cars well of course Justin I mean when you have a dad like Derek and he'll be there with Tommy Kendall uh, they're going to be doing I understand their torque show which they'll be able to do a, a live show there. They go around the country. I saw them at Pebble Beach on the lawn. Uh, they were doing a show there with the Pebble Beach Concours. So those two guys are awesome. In fact, here's a little uh, sidebar. Tommy interviewed me on my 1,000th podcast. Nice. So that was pretty cool to switch the switch the, the, the mics on me. Yeah, I, I ran into him several times during Car Week at Pebble Beach. Uh, just a super nice guy. And of course, you mentioned Patrick Long. He was my guest last week. Uh, we were talking about this event, but also about uh, attending Rensport. Of course, he's a big Porsche guy, and he's going to have a what he saw. He said called a little pop up Luftecult from his Luftecult events. Uh, for you listeners that don't know what that is, go check it out. I'll put a link on Judge Show Notes page. And also, you mentioned uh, lots of celebrities, so there'll be a people there to do signings and autographs and that. There's also going to be a, a Meekum auction. I understand, and they're bringing hundreds of cars. So uh, better keep your wallet in your pocket, Judd. <laughs> well, it, it's fun to. Uh... Uh, I've gotten to know uh, Dana Meekum over the last number of years, and uh, those those auctions are are exciting, and uh, uh, some pretty amazing cars trade hands, and that that's a part of the Chattanooga 
weekend uh, as well as all the show and concours and the B-52s are, are, are playing. And yeah. uh, the important thing to remember is this is all done for charities and to benefit the Neuroscience Center at uh, CHI uh, uh, Memorial Hospital and the Neuroscience Innovation Foundation in Chattanooga. And so we're having fun with cars, but also uh, trying to do good things for some really uh, smart research people. Well, absolutely. And we've talked about that this week uh, for brain injuries and and challenges with dementia and Parkinson's and all the different types of neuroscience ailments that people have of what they're doing there. And CHI Memorial is such a wonderful, wonderful place. And I understand, too, you do some pretty cool things with your Ferrari and with your fellow Ferrari friends. Um, You take cars to children's hospitals and have kids come down and sit in the cars and see the cars. That's got to and that's got to mean a lot for you. Well, it's it's fun in uh, Children's Hospital in Minneapolis, and there's a another one in St. Paul. We've, uh, for a number of years, taken a whole bunch of great cars, mostly Ferraris, to a, a sort of front parking lot area where the kids, if they're able, they can come out and, uh, and, and look at them. Otherwise, they're looking through the windows, and uh, we try to make lots of noise and have fun and make it as interactive as possible. And we've, uh, I think, brightened a lot of kids' days and spirits uh, looking out at some pretty cool cars. Yeah, it's a wonderful deal. You know, another thing that uh, I've got to mention here, in the past they've had some racing at the Chattanooga event. This year they're going to have wheel-to-wheel speed demonstrations, or what they're going to call them. Brian Redman, who uh, has been a guest on this show, and a little funny sidebar, Brian and I found out when I interviewed him last week for Ren Sport, we share the same wedding anniversary. We both were married on the 8th of September, although he, like typical Brian, he's way ahead of me on laps on the track. I think he's up to 61 (laughs) 61 now. We're at 39. But um, they're going to have the Brian Redman's Targa 66. And they're going to have some pretty cool cars there, I understand. Yeah, I think that's a a big uh, group of really, really neat cars. And while it isn't uh, flat out uh, who's going to win the race, there's some very high-speed touring, we should say it. Uh, uh, I don't think the fans would know it isn't racing, but... uh, uh, anyway, there's some great cars, and, and we worked really hard to bring some very special competition cars uh, in, and uh, they've done a ton of work on this track, even in the last few weeks, to get it ready for uh, really high-speed uh, uh, cruising. Yeah, going to be cool. And uh, Corky Coker was my guest a few days ago, and he races some old cars. He's got a bunch of old cars, and there's going to be cars there from the teens all the way up to, uh, I think, a little bit newer cars. But the one big granddaddy of this whole thing, and a thing that I'd love to go to, are Concours events. And I know that this Chattanooga event, this is a real Concours elegance. I mean, they've got some serious, serious cars there. Are, are there any classes of cars that you really look forward to seeing at a Concours of this stature? Well, it, it's always fun to see competition cars and and uh, see what uh, what what they look like uh, up close there's everything from uh you know the lemons of the world the you know the craziest funniest looking bizarre cars to uh you know Le Mans winning uh race cars so I, I think I can't tell you how many classes but there's something like uh 12 or 14 classes and we have very highly qualified judging going on and very high standards and we think we're attracting some of the world's best cars and they will be very carefully scrutinized by the judges and i think it'll be fun for the uh the public to to be able to get up close and see these cars many of them uh are are very rare and you know one-offs or you know a, a group of three or something one of three and cars that you just don't get to see very often so uh chattanooga should be an awful lot of fun and a great way to see some very very special automobiles Oh, yeah. Serious judging there. Mike Tilson is the chief judge. He's been a guest twice here on the show. And last year's car, I believe, was a 37 Cord, an 812 Phaeton that was best of show. But the list of cars 
are just amazing. You can go to the Chattanooga Motor Car Festival website and see the list of winners last year. And when you take a look at that list, you're going to see cars that are easily Pebble Beach caliber type vehicles that are going to be on the lawn again this year. So really, really fun Yeah, and stuff. many of these cars were at Pebble Beach, uh, you know, a, a month ago or whatever. And, we'll, you know, we'll... Uh, if they got 99 and a half points at Pebble Beach, they'll uh, fix that half point and be perfect for Chattanooga. <laughs> Absolutely. No doubt. Absolutely. Well, this is going to be so much fun. There's so many cool things to go see. I'll make sure I put links to all of them. You know, a couple of things I want to talk about uh, here with you, and I always ask my questions a couple, my guests, I always ask my guests a couple unique questions here. And I'm going to do the same with you today, Judd, because... Um, You know, you have been a car guy forever, and I got to tell another quick story, and I'm not sure if you've heard this story. Maybe I share this with you. I have a friend that I grew up with in La Jolla. We used to surf together, and we lost ways. He went off and became a doctor. He now lives in your part of the world, and we reconnected at a SEMA show years ago, and he's attended some events with me, and he was telling me a story when we were sitting, I think we were sitting at the Quail, and he goes, you know, where I live in Minnesota, I was out riding my bike one summer, and this guy came flying flying around the corner in this red 250 short wee bags. I couldn't believe it. And I'm looking at him go by him. Oh my gosh. And I said, I know who that is. And he goes, what? I go, yeah, I think I know how many of those could there be flying around, you know, where you live. And sure enough, that was you. So it's a small world, this car world, right? It is. It is a small world. And uh, at one point long ago, there were three short wheelbases in our small town of Wyzetta, and if any one of us got kind of in trouble for going too fast, you said, "Well, that wasn't me. That, of course, was <laughs> was, was was the the dentist or uh, yeah. another guy." But now, now uh, two of the three have have uh, headed out of state, so uh, mm-hmm. I, I'm kind of the only culprit out there these days. Yeah, you're the lone wolf uh, getting yourself in trouble. So here's a question for you. This is a rather unique question. I'm going to crawl into your head and be your car psychologist, since we're talking about doctors here. If you were reincarnated as a vehicle, and this isn't what you want to be because that's way too easy, 250 share wheelbase, that's what I want to be. <laughs> this is how you perceive yourself as some kind of car. What would you be but the most important? important part of the question is why wow that's a really good question <laughs> good question you know i i don't want to go to the easy answer but having had this 250 short wheelbase for almost 40 years and as i said before you can you can go flat out in that car at 7000 rpms in fourth gear and have a lot of fun or you can you can go at 2000 rpms in second gear and make a lot of noise and you can bring out anything you want from that car from you know really high speed hang on tight to beauty and you know it's gorgeous and looks fast sitting there and it's such a great sort of thought about life because that car will do anything you want it to do and that's kind of a neat way to run your life and you know be able to uh you know, be aggressive and fast when you need to be or compassionate and uh, and more relaxed when uh, when that's more appropriate. And uh, I can't think of a car that exemplifies that full range of potential than the short wheelbase. I'm a lucky, lucky human because I get to experience that uh, a lot. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. Well, I'll let you get away with that one. I think when you've had a car for that long in your life, it does become a piece of the family. That's for sure. And uh, there's some great pictures out there of that car with a Christmas tree tied on the top of it. <laughs> I have to say I've swiped those and sent those out during the holiday season a few times. Um, and it always garners some wonderful, wonderful comments. So uh, I love the fact that you're using the car. But more importantly, you share that vehicle with a lot of people by taking it to events. So I want to thank you for doing that. A lot of people have nice cars and they tuck them away and nobody ever gets to see them but uh not this one does your car have a nickname by any chance do you call it something well it's just kind of the short and the short. <laughs> uh you know i've got a friend who keeps a uh, a 1951 212 uh ferrari in the garage with me and and he'll call up and say should we go exercise the short and the 212? And it's like, <laughs> absolutely. It's a perfect day in Minnesota. Let's go. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, two pretty rare cars. Uh, his is much more rare than mine. But 
anyway, we uh, we use them a lot in the short and sort of uh, I wouldn't say it's the nickname, but it's 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 the shortest, most concise uh, way to to talk about it. And uh, most of my friends, when I say the short, they know what I'm talking about. Well, no kidding. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I love to talk about books here on cars. Yeah, uh, because well, books are important. And it seems like in the past, I don't know, 10 plus years, seems like books are kind of fading away sometimes for people. They're into short little snippets of things. But I know there's a couple books that you and I talked about before we got on the line here that you found really important and enjoyable. And one of them is titled Undaunted Courage. What's that book about? Well, that's the story of Lewis and Clark going across the the country in uh, 1805, I think 1804, they started and, you know, experienced things for the first time as Caucasian folks going, ac- going across and saw the buffalo and saw things that nobody, nobody other than uh, indigenous people had ever seen. And to, you know, go by canoe and foot all the way across the country and survive all of the, uh, trials and tribulations and, and uh, having great help from uh, uh, the Native Americans and the uh, Sacaguia story of, of uh, almost getting in a lot of trouble and, and having help from uh, a, a Native to, to keep them safe. It's just an amazing story. And to think of, you know, it's not all that long ago that this happened. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, to get... Uh, uh, and I think there are, I don't know, 30 members of that, that group going across or something like that. And one person died um, from appendicitis. But other than that, everybody made it back. And it's a extraordinary story of what this continent looked like, uh, sort of pre-Western influence. And uh, it would have been amazing to see that. And, you know, a, along that line, uh, endurance, the story of Ernest Shackleton and his his shipmates being frozen in the ice and having to to leave in a tiny little boat and sailing 700 miles in the uh, you know in the worst of possible conditions and getting to Elephant Island and having to climb you know up a huge mountain and slide down the other side and they thought that Shackleton and his gang were dead and he walked into the fishing village looking like a ghost (laughs) and uh the person looked up from the desk saying who are you said i'm ernest shackleton and they went back six months after he had left and rescued all of his guys who had been you know surviving (laughs) frozen into the ice with their ship that was completely destroyed and you know of course back then there's no communication so they had no idea if they were going to be found or not and Shackleton went back and rescued every single one of them, and it's it's an extraordinary story of, of perseverance and and uh, you know the old days of adventure. Two great books. I'll put links to both of these books on Judge Shono's page. I definitely need to be on your library shelf. Uh, take a read. So another thing I like to do with people here, Judd, is to enable them to go on what I call the ultimate drive. Now, you already have the ultimate car, so we're going to stick with the 250, the short, but I'm going to magically transport you to anywhere on the planet. And here's the fun part. You can take anybody with you, including somebody from the past who's no longer with us. Hmm, That could be interesting. So if I could uh, magically snap my fingers and put you and the short anywhere on the planet, where would it be and who would you be with? Wow. Another great question. (laughs) Um, uh, You know, I I think it would be amazing to take somebody out in some of the roads we travel here in in just the western suburbs. Uh, We get out into farm country and there's some extraordinarily wonderful driving roads here in Minnesota. And, you know, nobody really knows that. And there are places where you can let it rip a little bit. We always obey uh, most of the time uh, uh, all the laws, but it's extraordinary driving and beautiful countryside. And whether it's springtime when things are just starting up and you've had your car stuck in the garage all winter to late fall when the colors are gorgeous, uh, it's really fun to get out. And only five miles or 10 miles west of where I live, 
you're in, in farm country with beautiful twisting roads and lakes and it's it's just gorgeous. So I, I would want to take somebody there and, you know, being a Ferrari guy, uh, if, if you could take Enzo Ferrari for a ride or let him drive your car, that would be pretty extraordinary. I uh, uh, went to the 1987 Million Milia uh, with uh, a fr- couple friends of mine and, and uh, all of a sudden there was a commotion at the Scaglietti factory and Mr. Ferrari came out the front door and I ran back uh, to the car and got my camera and was a little obnoxious getting up close and took a bunch of pictures back in the days of film and developed all those pictures. And nine out of 10 of the pictures were out of focus or his eyes were closed or yeah. looking the other way or something was bad. And one was an awesome picture of Mr. Ferrari, which I sent two copies of to him and asked him to please sign one. And I said, I hope you keep one of them because I think it's a great picture. And six months later, uh, I got a uh, wonderful envelope with prancing horses all over it. Mm. And Brenda uh, Werner, Enzo's secretary, mailed me back uh, a copy of my picture that Enzo had signed. Wow. And it's my prized possession. And uh, and then Enzo died uh, about six months after all of that. Oh, and wow. we went to a Ferrari Club event and and ran into Brenda, and she said, we need something Ferrari at this event uh, because it's now all, you know, all the Agnelli family and Montezemolo, and and people are forgetting about Mr. Ferrari. And I pulled out a copy of my picture, (laughs) and she said, hold on, Dayton from Minnesota. Oh, my gosh. Did you get the one I sent you? I said, yeah, there's a copy of it. And she said, hold on, hold on, Piero. And Enzo's son, Piero, came over and said, oh, are you the photographer? I said, I am. And I'm not a photographer. I just clicked a great picture. And Piero said, my father liked your picture very much and put it in his office on his credenza. Oh, my gosh. And, uh, wow. And when he, uh, when he died, I took the picture out of his office, and it's on my desk. And I said, hold on, hold on. That, that's all great. But your dad liked my picture. Oh, he <laughs> thought it was a great picture. Wow. So uh, you can have my cars. You can have all the stuff I've got. And I, I get to know that Enzo liked my picture. And that yeah. that's really meaningful to me. Wow. What a story. Holy cow. That's awesome story. Well, you know, all you need is one good one. And, uh, you know. All you need is one good one. One good one. Yeah, that's a good one. And I've story. had a lot of fun. I've, I've given, I bet I've given several hundred copies of those pictures out to just special people who understand kind of that, that coolness of, uh, of the connection to Mr. Ferrari and to the connection of the cars and and usually uh, the person I'm giving it to uh, is, has got some Ferrari history in them. Yeah. But uh, anyway, uh, for instance, Luigi uh, has got a copy of my picture. And, nice. And uh, I've had a lot of fun with, with people like that who understand it. Wow. What a cool story. I love it. <laughs> it's just so, so, you know, you just never know when you meet people, uh, what might come from it. And especially in the car world, before I let you go today, Judd, and it's been so good to catch up with you and chat. Could you leave us with, I guess my guest to leave us with a parting words of inspiration, a success quote, or maybe some kind of mantra that has meaning for you, either about life or about cars. Well, everybody has a would have, could have, should have. And about uh, three months after I bought my short wheelbase 38 years ago, and obviously a, yacht, a lot younger, a friend of mine called who had the first GTO ever made, 250 GTO. And he said, my friend in France is selling his GTO. And it comes with four other cars and a, a 275 GTB four cam, a Daytona, a 250 Lusso, and an ATS Uh, come with that car and the five cars, including the GTO are $250,000. Oh, And I thought I had just spent, spent, you know, more than is even reasonably, uh, possible or smart to do to buy my short wheelbase. And I said, $250,000. I can't do that. And he said, you have five minutes. And I passed on that. And it would be fun to uh, have a GTO in the garage because I would still have it had I bought it 38 years ago, hopefully. And uh, anyway, you know, when you get the bug, go for it. And 
you know, I uh, I can't redo that today, and GTOs are <laughs> are uh, pretty unobtainable. Yeah, um, and it would have been fun to <laughs> say, yeah, it would be pretty fun to say, well, uh, you know, I, I, I got this car plus four other great ones for 250 grand and oh, uh wow uh, woulda coulda shoulda but i'm an extraordinarily fortunate uh, lucky uh humbled individual to have such a great car for so long wow well i've heard some pretty wild uh, almost got them stories and i've got a few myself but never never one like that oh my goodness that is absolutely incredible well you know, you did fine. So I think we're, I think all is good. I have absolutely nothing to complain about. <laughs> do you know where that GTO is today? Um, I, I do. And I, I, uh, I would probably blank on all the names, but it's a great car. And uh, I don't know that I want to say who, who has it without their permission. But um, anyway, yep. any GTO is a spectacular car. And this one is uh, had some great history to it and, uh, is really one of the, one of the sought after of the 36 and, uh, it would have been fun to, to be part of that, but, uh, that's okay. Yeah. I think you're uh, doing just fine. Wonderful. Yeah. There's a, a guy up North of us here, John Shirley, who has a beautiful GTO. I think the only white one, uh, that I've ever seen. Yep. And he takes that car out a lot like you do. He takes it all over the world, uh, participates in lots of events and I've been able to take a seat in that car. So. Yeah, pretty darn special. Well, Judd, this has been wonderful. I want to remind you listeners, 4th Annual Chattanooga Motor Car Festival takes place October 13th through the 15th. You can go to the website. I'll put links to it. Easy to find, chattanoogamotorcar.com. You got to be there. You're going to have a fun three days. It's going to be the best. Judd, thanks for taking a little pit stop with me, sharing some wonderful stories with me. Until you and I talk again, my friend, I'll see you at the Chattanooga Motor Car Festival. I look forward to uh, crossing paths again, and uh, we should go for another spin. It's uh, highly uh, due. There you go. Absolutely. Thank you, my friend. I'll say hi to Doug for you. Sounds great. Want to hear something crazy? Veterans work on billions of dollars of vehicles, planes, and engines while deployed, but they can't touch our car until they've obtained a certification and training requirements for employment back here at home. That's crazy. Dick Force Foundation Military Transition Fund provides scholarships and grants so our veterans can transition to great careers following their service for this great country. Support Tech Force, support Tech Force, a charity of choice here at Cars Yeah, and its workforce development efforts for our veterans by donating at techforce.org today. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah.